Well, uh, firstly, a word about Amory. Of course, Amory, um, my predecessors, Brendan Crabb and Doug Hilton, played key roles as part of the action group in, uh, in lobbying the government to uh, set up MRFF. Um, the uh, Amory now consists of 47 medical research institutes, of which only three quarters are independent. It's a broad church. It consists of uh, research which extends from uh, biomedical to clinical and public health. Uh, and uh, um, we are not silos, we're linked in. Uh, the, uh, most of the uh, directors of medical research institutes are also playing a role in hubs, which uh, are precursors and, uh, and units, if you like, of uh, AHRTCs and are also playing leadership roles in AHRTCs themselves. So we see ourselves as part of the research ecosystem of hospitals, universities, research institutes working on precincts such as my own at Westmead, 25 kilometres away from the central campus of the University of Sydney, and also interacting with industry and the desire to uh, enhance high quality jobs in our regions. So um, not as independent as you might think, or maybe independent, hopefully, in funding. And a lot of the things I'm going to say today are going to resonate with uh, Steve's uh, presentation. The uh, challenge for the medical research institutes uh, is uh, stagnant financial growth, but with increased costs, insufficient support for the full spectrum of health and medical research, and recognising that uh, NHMRC, MREA, uh, needs to retain a uh, translational bent, uh, but uh, because of financial strictures, there are funding bottlenecks and imbalances. Uh, insufficient funds for proof of concept research, for protecting intellectual property, and I should have said proof of concept research in HMRC development grants, uh, linkage, ALC linkage-like grants, um, protecting intellectual property, the cost demands of Preclinical versus clinical research is putting huge strains on the system, as we all know, uh, with very low success rates. Uh, health services research is underfunded, and uh, our hospitals are crying out for this clinician research, as Steve mentioned, and I, I totally endorse that issue, and we'll come back to it later on, and uh, also clinical research infrastructure. And Amory has uh, always and will always support the recommendations of the McKeon Review uh, of Australian Health and Medical Research and the use of these principles to guide the direction of the Medical Research uh, Future Fund. The uh, principles uh, are firstly that we want to see this fund grow to its full potential of 20 billion. That's the most important issue for us is to ensure that we continue uh, to uh, be active in uh, uh, maintaining uh, the uh, pressure on government to bring this up to its full uh, recommended um, amount. We uh, believe that the Medical Research Future Fund and the NHMRC a Medical Research Endowment Account need to be complementary and interactive. And we believe that there needs to be enhanced mobility between all types of institutions. And by that I mean between uh, hospitals and industry, institutes and universities. As uh, uh, we discussed with Bill Ferris at Westmead a couple of days ago, we really need to see more of our PhD students being able to move across the, uh, um, the research uh, uh, industry uh, uh, boundary. And we do see an ongoing, ongoing role for the Australian Medical Research Advisory Board. We'd like to see continuity. Uh, Ian said that um, the uh, priority uh, uh, areas uh, are sh quite short. I think you said two to four years, another four I've seen two years. So we do want to see some continuity, some corporate knowledge in the role of, of that board. Otherwise, uh, it can flip-flop all over the place with uh, uh, political issues. So our recommendations, which uh, have been uh, um, uh, modified in the light of the public consultation since our uh, submission, are to build capacity in the translation and implementation of research discoveries. And uh, um, there are measures of success, uh, which are important to ensure that we do have measures of success 
are increased proof of concept research, increased clinical research in public health and health policy and economics research, the improved adoption of research findings in healthcare, which is so badly needed in our hospitals, and increased commercialization or increased capital raised from patents, licenses and other measures. We want to see, uh, and Steve will be pleased with this, uh, the enhanced integration and translation through advanced health research and translation centres and research hubs. And this is already happening. We've got the vehicle. Perhaps we'll have more vehicles after this uh, current round. Uh, and we need to use these vehicles, uh, and many of our precincts are currently doing this. Um, so I think some of the changes that Steve alluded to are already in process. And the measures of uh, success here are more patient and health system-centred research, better adoption of research findings into the health system, uh, and, uh, and I think everyone, uh, certainly at the top, in healthcare is aware of the uh, need to change behaviours, as Steve uh, mentioned, according to evidence-based uh, medicine. And we want to see improved quality and impact of hospital-based research and improved healthcare outcomes. And these, uh, um, the, uh, the integration of uh, uh, research institutes, universities and hospitals will certainly help improve the quality and impact of hospital-based research. Uh, at our precinct, there are 63 um, uh, LHD-employed uh, people working in our institute, and they work back and forth between hospital and institute. Really important. There needs to be a balanced investment in priority-driven and investigator-driven research, linking them together. Uh, the uh, there needs to be, as, as measures of success, greater research impact, and uh, there are various metrics being developed. Uh, the uh, Mike Nielsen and the Hunter Research Institute is looking at process metrics, but ultimately we're going to be held to account on some of these metrics in the future in terms of uh, research impact. Uh, we want to see increased collaboration between consumers, clinicians, <coughs> researchers and government and we want to see increased leveraging of funding from industry and philanthropy. And I think, as uh, Bill Ferris mentioned the other day, only about 30% uh, of uh, funding for research in Australia comes from industry as compared to the OECD average of 60%. So much more of that needs to happen in the future. Now, a key point uh, for, uh, for AMRI and uh, I think for all of the sectors is to support the full cost of research. And as one wise chief executive of our LHD pointed out, it's really important to indicate that the full costs of research are an investment, that uh, we're currently only supporting part of these costs. The full uh, the research support costs, in addition to uh, the uh, research grant dollar, are uh, in excess of 60 cents per dollar of research funding. Uh, and the deficit for AMRI institutes is about 24 cents in the dollar. So we really do need sustainable mechanisms to support the costs incurred in undertaking and undertaking all research, but now the added uh, burden, if you like, of medical uh, research future fund uh, uh, as well uh, needs to be taken into account. Uh, this is a real major problem for us, and I think... Uh, Certainly at AMRI, we uh, uh, would like to see the US-type system of um, full costs of research going with the, uh, the grant dollar. And uh, if that were to occur, uh, there would be increased efficiency, translation outcomes, quality of research facilities, job security, competitive grants awarded to uh, hospital-based researchers where they can really get, for the first time, some uh, uh, proper um, support for their research other than through the uh, grant dollar. Now, the investment in people, um, we believe that the Medical Research Future Fund should be open to all researchers, irrespective of institution, discipline and stage of research. 
uh, to create new and sustainable career pathways, to reduce the loss of well-trained clinician scientists. And we've seen a lot of this on our precinct, and I'm sure every precinct have seen this, that uh, people coming back from overseas, well-trained in research, pressure of clinical work uh, means that they drop their research and also drop their, sometimes drop their commitment to uh, evidence base in the uh, clinical setting. So we need more practitioner fellowships or fellowships like them. And we need to provide more opportunity for early and mid-career translational researchers, in fact, all researchers as well. And we need relevant KPIs that show success. We uh, expect uh, the MRF F expects applying scientists to devise suitable KPIs uh, for their applications, but beyond that, we really do need to uh, look at the challenge of measuring success beyond publications. Uh, research translation, healthcare outcomes, savings to the health system, increased collaboration, and increased interaction with overseas and national benefits. And finally, uh, we need a clear and transparent application process. We need to use and leverage existing mechanisms, including NHMRC. We need to develop clear criteria that underpin funding decisions. And above all, we need to use experts to guide decision making. So uh, um, using the absolute experts in the field for peer review. And we need to avoid duplication and to fund synergy, or as some people have said, additionality. Thanks very much.